In this video we're going to look at how to differentiate uh, various functions, um, other words for differentiating, finding the derivative or working out the gradient formula uh, for a function. So um, if we've got a function which is x to the power of n, then the derivative um, is f dash of x, that's n x to the n minus 1. Previous videos on doing this by first principles will prove why this is the case, but uh, for now we're just going to use these and, and hopefully we can then get a sense of how to actually find the derivatives for various different functions. So for example, if I took uh, n equals 7 in this rule, if I had x to the 7 and I wanted to differentiate it, well n is 7, so I just need to replace uh, n with 7 in this formula. So I have 7x to the, and now n minus 1 is 6, so it would be 7x to the 6. Um, this works with negative values as well, so if I had x to the minus 3, say, that would give me uh, f dash of x is minus 3x uh, to the minus 4, because minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4, or if I had uh, f of x equals x to the half, say, uh, that would give us f dash of x is 1 half x to the, now 1 half minus 1 is minus 1 half. Now, um, when we're dealing with these ones, you've got to think a little bit about what's going on in terms of uh, the indices. So, for example, x to the one half, that's the square root of x. So, if I want to differentiate the square root of x, we get um, one half times, now x to the minus half is one divided by the square root of x. So, we end up with one over two times the square root of x. Um, so, this video isn't about indices, so you can look that up in other places. Um, but similarly, you know, x to the minus 3 is 1 over x cubed, so that differentiates to this, which is minus 3 divided by uh, x to the 4. And remember, what this means is if I take this, the graph of this function, um, you know, y equals this function, then the gradient at a particular value of x is given by this formula. Uh, for the gradient, which is the derivative. And in fact, sometimes we write this down in a slightly different way. You know, rather than having f of x equals, we might have, you know, y equals. You know, so maybe I've got y equals x cubed, and then instead of writing f dash of x, we write dy by dx equals, and we do exactly the same thing. We get 3x squared for the derivative. It's just a different notation. We often think of having y equals f of x. Y is y in this function of x. We often uh, think of interchangeably. So let's not worry too much about all that notation uh, at the moment, that, but just the process from going from these things on the left hand side to the things on the right hand side. Um, so the first extension of this rule is this, this that we can multiply in front of a function by any number. So for example, I could just multiply it by uh, a. So actually I could say take this one, I could multiply it by 3, and I would just get 3 times 7 times x to the 6 on as the derivative which is 21. Okay, so I get 21x to the 6. Similarly for this one I could say why don't we multiply it all by 2 uh, and then instead of minus 3 here we would have minus 3 times 2, so minus 6. And that's something that's always true in differentiation. If I, you know, even if we go into more complicated functions, if you multiply a function just by a constant then its derivative also multiplies by that constant. And it's worth remembering we've got a couple of special cases of this formula which are just uh, sometimes people find confusing even though it, it, they're really the easiest uh, cases. So if my function is just say something like 3x then the gradient of that function is just 3. And we, and we kind of know this already because you know, if I did y equals 3x that would just be a graph whose gradient is is 3 at any point. So whatever the value of x the gradient is 3. As it goes across 1 it goes up 3. So we know the gradient function must just be the constant 3. Um, but it does also fit with this rule here because we can think of it as uh, having n equals 1 so it's 3 times x to the 1 and then when I plug it into this formula here um, of course a is 1 here so we're we're not, we're not really using the a um, we've got 3 times x to the n minus 1 and n minus 1 here is 1 minus 1 so that's 0 but of course x to the 0 is just 1 so this is just 3 so it is a special case of this formula. Um, and similarly, when I differentiate a constant function, so like f of x equals 4, 
then f dash of x is 0. And again, we can notice if I start with a function that's just y equals 4, it's just a straight line, it's got gradient 0 everywhere, so its gradient function must be 0. But it also sort of fits into the logic here, it's not really a special case, because you can think of this as 4 times x to the 0, uh, and you know now we have got, I suppose, the case with a back in here, so a is 4 and n is 0, and then as soon as I do this I get 4 times 0 times x to the minus 1, so that's just, because because it's 0 times it all, uh, it's 0. So, so they're not really a special case. Now the next thing we realise with the different with the gradient function um, that we can use is that if I want to differentiate a sum or a difference, I just you know plus or minus uh, lots of different terms that are all a num of this form ax to the n, then we can just differentiate them all individually and uh, add them together. So if this is my y, then dy by dx, or you know again I'm saying I could you know call y f of x and f dash of x dy by dx. Uh, then the gradient function here, I just differentiate them one term at a time. So 4x to the 6, um, I get 6 times 4, which is 24, and then I reduce the power by 1, so we get x to the 5. Now I do the same thing here, I've got minus 2x to the 5, so my n is 5, so I get minus 2 times 5, which is minus 10x to the n minus 1, which is 4. And these two terms here, 3x and 7, as we just said, you can apply the rules, but usually we just remember that 3x differentiates just a 3, the linear term, and the 7 uh, is 0. So um, there's my gradient formula. Here's another one, 2x to the quarter minus 3x to the minus 2 plus 2. Again, we'll just apply the rules. So you can see what's happening here. We just pull the number in the index down. Uh, multiply it in front and reduce this number by 1. So I get 2 times a quarter. 2 times a quarter is 1 half. x to the 1 quarter minus 1, so I get minus 3 quarters. This one here, I pull the minus 2 down in front, so minus 2 times minus 3 gives plus 6 times x to the, and I reduce minus 2 by 1 and get minus 3. Be careful here, people sometimes make the mistake of saying minus 1, but we're still subtracting 1, which makes minus 2 into minus 3. And again, 2 here differentiates to 0, so we don't get any term there, uh, and that's our final answer. Here's another one. Um, so here I've got to differentiate 3x to the 15, so 15 times 3 is 45, x to the 15 minus 1, so 14. Don't be put off by the pi here, it's just a number, so 7 times pi times x to the 6, and again a half times 3, so that's 3 over 2, or 1 and a half, x to the 1 half minus 1, so x to the minus 1 half. And as you do more of these, get the hang of them, it becomes pretty quick and routine. We just multiply by the power, and reduce the power by 1, and we can just add and subtract successive terms. Uh, sometimes uh, you'll get an example like this, where you know you have to... Uh, think about what you're doing before you do the differentiation, you see, because these aren't in the form x a times x to the n, we've um, got the cube root of x and 5 divided by x squared. But we can rewrite them using what we know about indices, so they are in this form. So we know the cube root of x is x to the 1 third, and 5 divided by x squared, that's 5 times x to the minus 2. Other videos out there on indices, uh, if you're not sure how that bit works. But for the purpose of this video, what we need to do is to convert these into the form ax to the n, and then we can just differentiate them as before. So x to the 1 third gives us 1 third x to the minus 2 thirds, and 5x to the minus 2, so we do minus 10x to the minus 3. And at this point, you might want to put them back in the form uh, that was given to you uh, in the question, perhaps. So actually, uh, we could use what we know about indices again here and say, well, this is the same as 1 over 3 times x to the 2 thirds minus, and this will be 10 divided by x cubed. And we could go a bit further here and say this is 1 divided by 3 times the cube root of x squared minus 10 over x cubed. And then we've given it our answer as something a bit more in the form uh, of the question, which is always good style. But I mean, either of these, you know, either of these three statements, any of these are all correct answers for the derivative. If you were asked to put it into a certain form for an exam question, say you should do that. But, uh, but if you just need to differentiate it, any of these would be fine. Once you get the hang of these, they all proceed in the same sort of way. So first step, 
convert it into uh, the index form, so 1 over root x is x to the minus 1 half minus 4x to the 7, that's already in a form we can differentiate, and the 7th root of x, that's x to the 1 7th, so differentiating it, so x to the minus half, I get minus 1 half x to the, now reduce this by 1, gives us minus 3 over 2, uh, 4 times 7 is 28, so that's minus 28x to the 6, and plus 1 7th x to the minus 6 7th, just for subtracting 1 from 1 7th to give 6 7th. Okay, so um, again, if you wanted to, we could try and put this back into a form with some square roots in it, but I'm not going to do that here. Um, so that's it. So differentiating functions, uh, if they're of this form, a times x to the n, uh, or the sums or differences of those terms, we can use this method to to find the gradient formulas. Notice we've only we can only do it for this sort of thing. So at the moment, you know, this method you can't apply to two to the x. Say so if you've got y equals two to the x, it's not okay to just say something like uh, dy by dx equals x times 2 to the x minus 1. That's a really common mistake, um, but that's not true. It's, this only works for functions where they are x to the power of something up here, um, but that you know that thing could be anything. It could be x to the 11 over 7, so then I get 11 over 7 uh, x to the 4 7, say, right? But it's got to be x to the power of, not something to the power of x. There's a different method for differentiating those sort of functions that will come a bit later on.